Merci. Bonjour et merci de vous joindre à moi. J'aimerais d'abord souligner que nous nous trouvons sur le territoire traditionnel non cédé du peuple algonquin Anishinaabe. Aujourd'hui, je vais vous parler des résultats de nos deux plus récents audits relatifs à la COVID-19. Ce dépôt portera 11 le nombre de rapports liés à la COVID-19 que nous avons livrés depuis le début de la pandémie au Canada, il y a maintenant plus de deux ans. The nine COVID-19 audits we delivered in 2021 looked at the government's actions to respond to the pandemic and at whether federal organizations were prepared to deal with a large-scale public health emergency. With the audits we are releasing today, the focus of our work is shifting to look at how federal departments and organizations manage programs and services for Canadians as the pandemic continued to evolve. Our first audit examined how the federal government procured and distributed vaccines to the provinces and territories to immunize Canadians against COVID-19. In Canada, public health is a shared responsibility between the federal government, the provinces, and the territories. Dans l'ensemble, nous avons constaté que l'Agence de la we santé publique public du Canada, Agency of Canada et Santé Canada, and Health Canada avec le soutien supported de by public, public services et and procurement Canada, Canada work together to respond to the urgent nature of the pandemic. Ils ont obtenu they obtained des COVID-19 vaccines COVID so that pour everyone in Canada could be immunized as quickly as possible. En 2020, in 2020, Public Services and Procurement Canada established advanced purchase agreements with seven companies that showed the potential to develop viable vaccines. En concluant ces ententes, Signing these agreements le increased the chances chance that Canada would secure enough de vaccine doses to support the largest immunization, immunization program in the country's history. history. Recognizing that this approach also meant that Canada could end up with a surplus of doses if all vaccines were eventually approved. Santé Canada, Health Canada adjusted its usual authorization process to speed up the regulatory approval of COVID-19 vaccines. Entre décembre Between December 2020 et 2022, and May 2022, the government paid for 169 million doses of the vaccines. Plus de 84 Over 84 million, million were administered to eligible people across the country, à des personnes admissibles and so by the provinces Canada. and territories. En moyenne, de la santé On publique average, a the Public Health Agency of Canada delivered vaccines within two days of receiving a province or territory's request. This is successful considering the logistics of transporting temperature-sensitive materials to sometimes remote locations. Des matières sensibles aux variations de température. While the organizations involved were successful in securing vaccines and quickly distributing them to the provinces and territories, the Public Health Agency of Canada's efforts to minimize wastage were unsuccessful. By the end of May 2022, Canada had 32.5 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines, estimated to be worth about $1 billion in federal, provincial, and territorial inventories. Another 50.6 million doses were deemed surplus and offered for donation. We found that the agency's ability to reduce wastage was affected by delays in implementing important functionalities of Vaccine Connect, the information technology system meant to help manage COVID-19 vaccines. We also found that the Public Health Agency did not have finalized data sharing agreements with the provinces and territories. As a result, it struggled to effectively share detailed case-level safety surveillance data with Health Canada, the World Health Organization, and vaccine companies. Nous avons soulevé les problèmes d'échange de données sur la santé entre les autorités de santé fédérale, provinciale et territoriale territorial health authorities in 1999, in 2002, in 2008, and again in our 2021 audit of pandemic preparedness. These long-standing issues, including implementing a pan-Canadian framework for sharing information, must be urgently addressed because the sharing of health data 
is a cornerstone of effective surveillance to keep Canadians safe. Je vais passer maintenant au second audit que nous avons publié aujourd'hui. Il porte sur plusieurs programmes It de soutien pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur and la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui offrait un soutien aux employeurs pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale d'urgence du Canada pour les personnes qui passent à la COVID-19 et aussi sur la subvention salariale Overall, we found that the Canada Revenue Agency and Employment and Social Development Canada effectively delivered COVID-19 programs to, to provide quick financial relief to individuals and employers affected by the pandemic. In this way, they served to prevent an increase in poverty and income inequalities and helped the economy bounce back. In 2020, the government decided to rely on information provided by applicants and limit prepayment controls to expedite helping people and employers affected by the pandemic. In doing so, it recognized that there was a risk that some payments would go to ineligible recipients. We found that overpayments of $4.6 billion were made to ineligible individuals. And we estimated that at least $27.4 billion of payments to individuals and employers should be investigated further. The Canada Revenue Agency and Employment and Social Development Canada recognize the need for increased post-payment verification work with the early decision to limit prepayment controls. As the pandemic continued to evolve, the post-payment verifications were delayed. The number of post-payment verifications included in the plans is insufficient to address all payments at risk of being ineligible. The agency and the department are not planning to verify payments made to all identified recipients who may not be eligible for COVID-19 benefit programs. Les efforts déployés jusqu'à présent Efforts to collect amounts owing have been limited to date and focused mostly on prompting voluntary payments. En date de cet été, the summer, l'Agence du Revenu Canada du Canada avait recouvré environ 2,3 milliards de dollars. Je suis préoccupée I am par le manque de rigueur des activités de vérification après paiement et de recouvrement. Activities. L'Agence du Revenu du Canada et Emploi et Développement Social du Canada doivent agir dès maintenant pour élargir leur plan de vérification après paiement afin d'y inclure tous les bénéficiaires identifiés comme à risque d'être non admissibles aux prestations. And the agency need to carry L'agence out their plans et le ministère doivent ensuite mettre en œuvre leur plan et recouvrir les montants owed. exigibles au titre de prestations liées à la COVID-19. The pandemic prompted the creation and delivery of income support programs never seen before in Canada. Many were up and running in a matter of weeks, where normally it would have taken months or even years. Though government organizations knew in 2020 that they would need to undertake significant post-payment work down the road, they have not adjusted their resources or plans to deal with the long-term effects of vast income support programs that were rolled out in record time. Billions of dollars have gone or may have gone to ineligible recipients. To preserve the integrity and fairness of Canada's tax system, the government is required under current legislation to take action. If it chooses a different approach, then it must be clear and transparent with Canadians. Je vous remercie de votre attention. Thank Je you for your attention. I am now ready questions. to answer your questions.